What's going on guys, your boy Amazing, we're back with another video, and in today's video guys, me going over the previous November festival characters that we've gotten on Grand Cross, and why these characters are pretty much the best characters in the game on their initial release, and why this means that you guys need to be saving for the November festival that's going to be coming, so let's hop into the video and let's go over it. Alright guys, so before we actually hop into the video, make sure to subscribe to your boy Amazing. We are on the road to the 40,000 subscribers. I'm literally like 1,300 subscribers away from that 40k, guys. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you guys are here for all the November, December festival content, I'm going to be covering pretty much everything. So with that out of the way, let's hop in and open up GC Database here. I'm going to be showing you guys the kits of each of the November festival characters and explain why they were the best at their time and why you guys need to be saving for these upcoming festivals. They're going to be absolutely insane. So let's hop in and talk about the November and December festival from 2020. So this was the one Escanor and Berserk Meliodas. These were the two characters that released. So you had the one Escanor and Assault Mob Meli. These are the two characters that had their fight. It makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, these are the these are the November and December, right, of that year. Um, the reason why these characters were super strong was because at the time, the one Escanor, when he released, um, he was a character that you literally, like, use any of his cards and you were one-shotting everyone in PvP. This guy had Flood, which is the first character have flood in the game so he had flood which is 0.8 percent additional damage for every percent of remaining hp on self right that was a really really broken skill at the time and then for his second skill here he had a 600 attack card which you know considering at the time uh there wasn't too many really broken skills like flood um this was still like a pretty good you know complimentary card and then uh for his passive he was giving a all stats increase that could not be removed right he had a buff effect all stats that could not be removed six percent up to three times which would mean you would get what 18 percent and then uh, when you do get the max uh, stacks, you do get a uh, debuff cleanse and debuff immunity for that turn, which is really, really good. And then after that, these stack buffs uh, are obviously they remove down one by one and then they go back up because that's the way, you know, the one Escanor works, right? So like that was really insane. And when uh, the one else, uh, the one Escanor released, he was a broken character, guys. He was the best character in the game for that month of November going into December. He was the best character in the game. And then uh, yeah, even his ultimate right here, this death ultimate. This was the first time we've had death in the game, and the only time we've had death uh, return on another character has been Freyr. He's the only other character in the game that has this ability where you deal a double the the damage you already did if you're six out of six, right? It's uh, final damage as additional damage. Damage, which is really really broken for death right so you obviously had a multiplier that scaled up you went from uh, 20 on the one and a six all the way up to the 100 and then the uh 1080 at the six out of six for ultimate or, or the one escanor i mean so he was really insane and then for the december festival that year guys we got assault mode meliodas this was the guy that brought demons to the forefront or at least we thought you know initially right assault mode Meli, the thing is with him is that he wasn't he was probably the weakest release for a november december festival and the reason i say that is because assault Mameli at the time did not have any support alongside what he was trying to do right um there was a team that was like fairly good with him but it wasn't a team that was like always going to be beating the one escort teams right like he was good but it just wasn't strong enough right so assault Mameli for you what you uh, for you guys that don't know if all allies are demons or those with commandments increase own stats by five percent and decrease defense related stats of all enemies by 15 percent for three turns when allies take damage limit of five times and applies an entry battle this passive was so good at the first day of release because everyone that you know went into pvp did not know exactly how you know assault melee worked and would attack into him and he would just start getting all stats all stats all stats and you would get defense related lower defense related lower and then you would just die right like assault melee would do so much damage he had a rupture aoe which ruptures times two damage against buffed enemies this was mainly to counteract like goddess Liz at the time right and then uh, the single target right here is Amplify. We know Amplify is super broken. And because of the way that Assault Melee worked, each of these 5% all stats were blue buffs. So they actually did affect the Amplify. So you were able to deal a ton of damage with that. And then for his ultimate, he actually increased the hero's basic stats, which means you got a attack, defense, and HP buff for Melee's uh, Amplify. And that also coincided with his kit as well. So Assault Melee, when he initially released, was really, really good. But the problem was is that people found ways to kind of deal with him because of the way he was kind of building his kit. You know, he didn't have anything to stop anyone from pushing ultimate and just kind of one bang and assault melee without giving him any of his stats um the one thing that did mitigate uh, assault melee uh in in the way he worked was actually his holy relic though they did kind of help him with that because assault melee got buffs for not being attacked right um which is something that i that i mentioned when assault melee needed to get a holy relic that was something he needed which he actually did get so he got basic stat increase when he's not hit right which is really really good but that's obviously like you know holy relics came out way way past assault melee's 
initial time and when he came out you know he wasn't the greatest character in pvp i think the one eskinor who was the november festival at the time was the better of the two now moving into 2021 with the characters we have with that our november festival for no uh, for 2021 of november was uh, for, uh fairly king harlequin right chad king chad king was broken if you guys were playing during chad king's release he was the best character in the game barring nobody else like literally no one else at the time was doing what chad king could do you rank up this man you got a shield right so uh, let me let me read this kid so when the hero uses a skill increases damage dealt to enemies by 30 percent and then create a barrier around all allies equal to 15 percent of the damage dealt for one turn and then decreases damage taken by 100 percent and increases the damage dealt by 25 percent applies an entering battle and excludes death match and king had double aoe of some of the strongest card effects in the game he had power strike at the time which power strike was only really on like sorry Ariel and like uh, Brunhild, I think at the time, um, and it was really good, right? Additional damage equal to enemy resistance, very very strong uh, card. And in his second card, he was Sever, which means he guaranteed crit pretty much every time he used the skill. So it was really really strong. And his ultimate was a cleanse, right? It uh, it also canceled the uh, buffs on all the enemies. And then for every buff, he also applied a uh, debuff that would be a damage received debuff. And honestly, this this ultimate even at lower dupe, it was still one bang in everybody. Like I remember at the time, if you would do like an AOE rank three, and then you would like follow up with the ultimate they were all dead like like he was so broken at the time because there was no one to counteract king and when king released he shut down purgatory bond he shut down you know like goddess team he shut down every team because you would rank them up you would do a rank three power strike and everyone's dead right like instantly like king was broken for his time um the character that released at the december festival for 2021 was actually trader melly and trader melly instantly countered chad king in the way that he worked right so chad king the reason why he was so broken is because he would be able to do th these rank threes like turn one and his shield would be super super strong because the stronger you hit with the attack the stronger the shield right so with uh, Trader Melly, the reason why Trader Melly kind of counteract that is because he had a Pierce card effect, which triple Pierce means that it actually shreds the shield a lot easier than a lot of other skills in the game. And so when Trader Melly released, he was able to have Amplify on his skills, right? Um, so he had Amplify, he had Pierce, and then he had a very, very strong ultimate, which was Cleave Damage, and this would scale up based on the dupes. We haven't even gone over his passive, but his passive was every time allies use single target attack skills, all of the hero stats increased by 6% uh, for three turns, stacking up to five times. So it was awesome automatically a power creep of assault melee because assault melee only got five percent whenever he was attacked but trader melee got buffs for when you attacked with him right which was really good that's what you know assault melee should have been it should have been when he was attacking he got like a really big buff right which is you know what trader melee was so trader melee got that and then uh if two or more of the attack skills uh were single target all used in the same uh single turn allies damage taken from enemies decreases by eight percent stacking up to 40 percent. so trader melee not only was he a very very good damage dealer he also was a support character so he covered two things that you would want in a character and trader melee till this day is one of the best pve characters in the game when he initially came out he was very strong in pvp but he obviously has fallen off it's been about two years now almost so you know you know you can kind of expect that he's not going to be the greatest anymore but back then he was a very very broken character and instantly shut down chad king in the meta he was the uh, the the new best unit in the game like we had a best unit in the game best unit in the game right the one has to know the best unit in the game you guys get the idea okay so so far we've had three best units in the game and assault melee being very close early on right so take that into account guys these are the november and december festivals of the previous years now last year if you guys have were, uh, were there for last year november festival was ultimate eskinor ultimate eskinor when he released it was kind of the uh, same thing with chad king um he was broken right like instantly when ultimate escort came out he was the character that was killing everybody he had a new skill effect called scorch which was two effects in one right it had an upgraded flood because it did 1.3 percent additional damage for every percent of remaining hp on self so he had a upgraded flood and he did additional damage equal to 30 percent of final damage to all enemies so he had a single target skill that hit aoe pretty much right broken like that was the first thing we've ever seen the moment we saw this skill i know everyone freaked out because we were like yo two two effects in his card and he was doing super like crazy stuff and then we look at ultimate asinor's second skill here overpower 0.8 percent additional damage for every percent of missing hp so let it's like a reverse flood and then additional damage equal to 35 percent of the hero's crit damage um minus 100 right so it's like a percent increase this was a really insane card too because the lower ultimate Asinor's HP, the stronger this card would be. And then this card would be stronger when he's higher HP, right? And then for the uh, final flame uh, and his passive, right? Applies Holy Flame to the... Uh, on. Uh, 
uh, on self at the start of the battle and increase the hero's damage dealt by 15% after using his skill up to four times, right? So the hero, uh, so he got a damage dealt increase um, and then he also had hero, uh, uh, Holy Flame. Holy Flame increases all these stats by 4% for each passing turn for five turns. So he, after five turns, would have 20% all stats, but then he would, uh, unfortunately, he would lose the 20% all stats after that. But in PvP at the time, guys, he was broken and even PvE content with Demonic Beast and all that, he was doing everything, right? He, he was insane. Um, and then uh, after that, all the hero stats do not drop below their values at the start of the battle. So the one uh, or ultimate Escanor, he had that effect before Mael where you could not be stat lowered, but it was only for himself. And it was only for uh, the hero stats do not drop below their values at the start of the battle, uh, which did get power creep because Mael got a better one where it's just you cannot be stat lowered at all. Like you could always just increase. But with uh, ultimate Escanor, you can lower his stats back to where he started with, right? And then uh, when taking fatal damage, the hero's attack related stats increased by 30%, right? And uh, the reason why fatal damage is important is because uh, the one ultimate Esnor has a revive, right? He has final flame. So pretty much the way he worked was the more dupes he had, the longer he would be alive after the revive. And there's a lot of text here, so it's a lot to kind of explain, but pretty much the, the higher the dupe, the more revives that ultimate Esnor would have. So he'd have four revives, and every time you use a skill, it would actually lower the final flames as well. It would remove one. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it was like a last stand ability, right? Like it was very, very cool and ultimate Esnor when he released he was the he was just broken man he, he was absolutely insane he was the what the second light character in the game um trainer Melly also was the first dark unit in the game by the way so i forgot to mention that all right so we now talked about ultimate Esnor. he was insane when he initially came out what happened ultimate Esnor? Purgatory Ramelli released for the end of year of last year um, for 2022, and he was broken as well. He shifted the meta completely to race teams, right? Well, you know, before Purgatory Melly, I feel like there were race teams. Obviously, there was like Goddess, there was Unknown, but Purgatory Melly brought forward the demon team that Assault Melly couldn't right? Purgatory Melee was able to do it. The reason why uh, Purgatory Melee was able to do that is because he was a dedicated, um, not necessarily just support, but he was the main DPS on the team, and he had everything that you would want in a character. And till this day, Purgatory Melee is still a very strong PvP character in the game. He's only a year old, guys, and he's still insane, right? So, for his passive, applies three bonds of Purgatory effects on self at the start of the battle, and if an ally takes damage from an enemy skill during the turn, or if the hero uses a skill, one shackle of Purgatory effect will be removed. So, the Bond of Purgatories are damage reduction, so he starts to lose damage reduction every time you, you know, use a skill or get uh, attacked, which is fine because he does get a, a pretty big buff when all the effects are removed. So when uh, once the effects are completely removed, the hero applies true magic on self and true magic uh, is removed when the hero uses a skill. And for true magic, it's going to remove all debuffs from self and attack related stats increase by 50%. So he get a 50% attack related stat increase so that he's just able to deal a ton more damage. And then when uh when it is removed the hero once again applies uh three shackles of purgatory so you get back the damage reduction and then you could repeat that you know that exact thing that happened over again right uh that increases their damage dealt by 40 percent when attacking enemies that are either in a stance or a debuff effect and finally you see how they they, they added and finally in the passive they were they kept going right uh, applies an effect on the end of the enemy's turn which removes one orb from the ultimate move gauge every two turns uh for for two turns on enemies who have not used a skill during their turn so this is what assault melee needed right because the way assault melee worked was that um if he was uh you know not attacked then he wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't debuff the enemies, he wouldn't do anything to them that would hinder them from doing that, right? That was the problem with Assault Melee. Purgatory Melee had this where, you know, if they tried all rushing you and not attacking Melee, then you just wouldn't get your ultimate because you just get dissolved instantly, right? He was so broken. And then for his skills, just like Ultimate Esnor, where he had two skills, two skill effects in one, Purgatory Melee had Frenzy, which is the first ever time we've had a skill like this, which is 1% additional damage for every hit of, of, of every percent of remaining HP on the enemy. So it's like based on the enemy's HP, the higher it is, the more damage you deal with this card. And then times two pierce rate increase as well. So you had two effects on that skill, which is insane. Just like, uh, just like Ultimate Esnor, right? And then the second skill inflicts slash damage, which was also a new effect, which is an additional damage equal to half of the hero's pierce rate, which it doesn't seem like a very strong effect versus like, you know, triple pierce rate from like, you know, Trader Melly, right? Like you feel like this is probably better, but the thing is this card hits very, very hard when you get that true magic up, right? Because you get, you know, additional 50% attack related stats. Attack related stats also means that you get pierce rate increase as well, which, you know, additional uh, pierce rate, obviously more damage for slash. Very, very good, right? And then we look at the ultimate here for Purgatory 
and melee, which inflicts magic burst damage and ignores enemies' crit resistance and crit defense by 30% to 60, uh, 60 of crit defense. And then this scaled up to, what was it? Uh, 120% and then 60% uh, crit resistance right there. And then also, he suppressed damage taken, meaning he would get damage cap as well. Not only would he one bang your whole team, he would get damage cap as well, which is absolutely insane, guys. So Purgatory Melee really set a standard for how strong a December festival could really be because we've oh I mean honestly I mean Trader Melly probably did too because Assault Melly when he initially came out wasn't too insane but we know that like Trader Melly kind of started that like you know very broken December that beats the November fest right um but we had remember in 2020 that the one Esnor was actually stronger than Assault Melly so we don't I'm not saying that like you know this year's November could be stronger than December or vice versa I think it definitely depends so there you guys go man those were the past November festival and December festival characters let me know in the comment section below your guys's thoughts on these characters i think every single one of them had a place in the meta or were very good for something in the game look at trader melly still he's still very good in everything and even ultimate Escanor in in just like regular content in the game whereas like purgatory melly is till this day is still a very strong pvp character and even assault melly now after getting his holy relic is still kind of you know he has his relevance i think the main one that's like completely fallen off to this point is the one Esnor, so he definitely will eventually get an LR and be a lot better, but there you guys go, man, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the November and December festivals in the past, that's gonna be it, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next video, man, peace out, and have a great rest of your day, guys, see you later, man.